Welcome to a new video about controller realization. This is our third example about the controller realization and we will discuss the PID controller realization in this example. And we will see how we can make a controller circuit using the transfer function and we get a circuit like this using op amps and a couple of capacitors and resistors. Of course we will do that step by step in our calculation also verify these in our SPICE simulations. So let's look at our example. We have the following problem, the design problem. We would like to design a physical analog electronic circuit for this PID controller transfer function here. You see that this is a PID controller which has two zeros. You can see it from the numerator and it has a one poly the origin. So it is actually a product of the PIN and PD controller. Okay. So how can we work this out? Let's look at the solutions. There are many solutions I said in the previous two examples about the PD and the PI control realizations. So this is just one of the many possible options. So we start first with the transfer function of the circuit. And this is the, the circuit we will use. It is actually a combination of the PI and the PD controller circuits we have discussed in the previous two examples. You see one one capacitor and resistor here in parallel and one resistor and one capacitor here in the feedback path in series and this combination will make, make this transfer function possible when you choose the correct value for the resistor and the capacitors. The VI and the VO are the Laplace parameter or the frequency domain parameters here and that is given here in capital letters. So we would like to first determine the transfer function that's just the output divided by the input in the S domain Laplace domain so it will be then using the impedances from the input, zi, and also the output, so designate this first, that can be then written in this format. We see the minus sign again because this circuit has the, the uh, standard configuration of an inverting amplifier. So we have the minus the feedback impedance divided by the input impedance. That's what's actually shown here. So we like to calculate now or determine the expressions for the zf and zi. First was ZI, which is a parallel combination of the R1 and the C1. We would like to determine the reactance of this one. That's why we have here XC1. So the parallel combination of these two components, and we know in the Laplace domain, it is 1 over SC1 for this situation. And for now, combine this, we can now multiply the R1 times the reactance of the capacitor C1 divided by the summation of the R1 and the reactance of the capacitor C1. Now, when you work it out and multiply this numerator in the denominator by SC1, you get this nice expression that can be used later in this fraction. Now, similar for, for the ZF, which is then the series combination of the resistor R2 and the C2, capacitor C2. So we can now again do the same thing and then use the Laplace expression for the capacitor reactance and combine them together, you will have this expression. So we will now substitute this blue and the red expression zi and zf here in this expression so you get the following. So we can now simplify also this one because it has a fraction and a fraction. So we can now say that let's multiply the numerator and the denominator by a value such that we have a nice expression. That's done here. So what is actually done? It has the following. It will multiply now the numerator and the denominator by first S times C2. That's why you have it here. And it will also multiply by R1 times C1S plus 1. And that's actually the multiplication of this part that's actually shown here. So I do two step at once. So let me repeat, maybe that's better. So first is we multiply by S C2 that we so that we get rid of this part of the fraction. So we only leave this, but you also need to multiply here. And then you multiply again, so that you get rid of this numerator of the fraction. And then you get it here. So that's actually what you see here. So two step at once. Now you can now recognize here the already the poles and the, uh, the pole already, but the zeros more easily. But let's continue and write it down so that we can recognize this transfer function in this format also. It will be very helpful. So we have now this and we're actually taking out the coefficient of the s so we isolate the s in the parentheses you see the, we take out the r1 times c1 we also take out r2 times the c2 and we keep the denominator as this 
We can now further simplify this and I just color them to recognize us easily. We see that the R1 and R1 cancel each other out from the numerator and the denominator, but also the C2 and C2. So you only have the R2 and the C1, R2 and the C1. And I also have, of course, of course, the S in the denominator. So we have this expression. Now, what does it say? Of course, this is not the representation or the format we have here given in the PID controller transfer function, but we can transform this in, the, uh, in quite easy step in this format such that we can recognize the parameters easily. So let's do that. So the transfer function of the PID controller, just this, we can first look at the denominator, I mean the numerator, and you can now write down s squared plus 20s plus 12 in these two parts. So we can say s plus 0 0.6192 times s plus 19.38. If you work it out, you will see that this is indeed correct, so you get a very nice result looking at this configuration, the format for the PID control transfer function and the circuit transfer function, because now you can see by comparing or saying already the KPID and you see zeros for the PID controller, two PID controller zeros here, you can now compare the two terms, so the PID transfer function and the circuit transfer function, you can get now the KPID is R2 times C1 and ZPID1, which is this, which is also the blue one here, and the green one, the ZPID2, which is actually this one. Now let's then also recognize the numbers because the red one here is 5, which is actually what you see in front here, which is this. So 5 is equal to the product of R2 and C2. Here in blue, 1 over R1, and the C1 is equal to 0.6192. 1 over R2 times C2 is equal to 19.38. So we have now the three equations. But we have four unknowns. So that means the following. We have four unknowns and, we own, and actually two, three equations. That means we cannot get the unique uh, values for the, each component. So we need to select one of the components to get the other three. So again, a similar problem as we had in the previous two examples. So we group them here together, the design equations again, and these are the, the transfer function for the circuit and also for the PID controller in our format. So let's then select for the C1, for example, one microfarad. I choose the capacitor because the capacitor is a little bit difficult to find the exact value and the resistor is easily uh, arranged in the practical format also. So let's select this, that means since C1 is now selected, chosen, that means the C2, R1, R2 are now also defined by this value. So we can then get from this first equation in red, the value of R2 by just rewriting this 5 over C1. That will give you 5 mega ohm. So we have already R2. You can now also use, since the C1 is known, also this formula to get the R1. So you can write it down 1 over the 0 0.6192 times R1, I mean C1 here, you can see that. Again, C1 is selected, so just add a substitute the value, you get here 1.615 mega ohms. So we have the values also here. So the only uh, unknown is C2, but that is also determined by using the value of this 5 mega ohm for R2. And we can write down now C2 is equal to 1 over 19.38 R2. So we can calculate now the C2, because we know the R2, and when we substitute this in here, we get the value for the C2, which is 10.32 nanofarads. So we have now the all the four values for our circuit. But it is possible that you get another value or a couple of values for the R1 and the C2 if you have a different transfer function representation, which is this one, the original case. So let me also briefly discuss that. For example, if the transfer function was given like this for our circuit, it can be because you can multiply out these parentheses. So you get the S squared plus the coefficient in front of S plus a constant. So you can work it out here easily. Then you need to compare this transfer function to the original transfer function given for the PID controller, which is this. So I again uh, colored that red, blue and green. So you can recognize it easily. Now you can see the following still. 5 is equal to R2 times C1. 20 is now equal to this part, 
which is a more complicated expression. And a 12 here in green is now this expression. What you see is, you can now, of course, calculate it, but a little bit uh, difficult, more difficult actually than this uh, analysis. But the R2 is still the same as 5 mega, it doesn't change. And since R2 is uh, calculated, you can also calculate, for example, the other values. But you will see that since we selected, of course, again, C1 is 1 micro and this R2 is uh, 5 mega ohms, these are the same. But the R1 and R, R, I mean, R1 and the C2 can be also two other values. And these are the following. I just skip now the details. But if you, for example, found these two values in, in, in accordance with the C1, which is micro, 1 microfarad and also R2 is 5 mega ohms, that is also perfectly fine and it will also do the job. It's not just this is possible. So we have actually two options here. Okay. Now having said that, let's continue and say that we take these four values in our final design. Now when we move on, we can also see that the circuit is now here. This circuit with the values. You can see that in the simulator. This is a simulator circuit. I will also discuss this R3 here. This R3 is required in order to run the simulator because the simulator wants to have a DC path through the op-amp branches. And if I only leave this in the feedback path, the capacitor will be an open circuit for DC. So it will not generate any results. So the problem is that the simulator will give you an error. So in order to sort of make the simulator happy, you can say, okay, I will put here a very large resistor in parallel such that this Almost exact same as the original case. That is then in this case 100 tera ohms, so it's almost uh, open. So, but still, it is. There is will be some current flowing here, but it's very small. So the error is also very small. So this is then the reason for having that. And then the simulation simulation will run, will run, so you can then produce the results. Okay, let's go to the simulation result and look at the frequency response because that is very important. This is the body plot. You can see the blue line for the gain. This is the gain. There's the frequency in Hertz going from one millihertz to one kilohertz. You see here a couple of labels. Let me start with this one. Mid band gain is, uh, is the value which you see here. It's actually sort of the minimum possible gain you have, 40 dB, which is then 100 as a scalar. You see also the zero frequency one and zero frequency two we have determined from the plot. Uh, but we had, of course, in our transfer function, different zero frequency. But let's see that also carefully. Because this was the transfer function for the PID controller. If I look at the zero frequency, it was 0 0.6192. It was, of course, in radians. But if I look at my value, it is 0 0.583 radians. So this is a little bit off. And you can also see that in the zero frequency here, it is 20.6 radians per second. I, and we had here almost 19.4, also a little bit off. So there is a small error. That error was really due to the uh, fact that these two poles and also the mid band gain is not that far away. So th they influence each other and the exact value will be not produced by looking just at the simple expression as we did here. But it is very close so we can perfectly say that this will do the job after a little bit fine tuning. So if I look at this uh, minimum value of the gain, again as said, we determine the zero locations by going up by 3.01 dB because since this is 40 dB I go up will be then 43.01 dB so we can recognize here from the plot the two zero frequencies and these are the zero frequencies okay that's for this and the circuit we have then used is this circuit as said before and not the other variation so we can perfectly say everything is fine here and we actually made what we wanted using these four components in this circuit all right, guys, this is our third example about a PID controller realization using physical components, analog electronics. And we have seen how we can determine the values using this op-amp circuit with a couple of resistors and capacitors for this case. And also verify this in our SPICE simulations. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.